It's the first full week of racing at Gulfstream's championship meet. Let's take a look at how the week went. It's Wednesday, December 10th, the start of the first full week of racing here at Gulfstream Park. And today I came out here in the crisp weather. It's 47 degrees when I got up this morning, mid 60s as I'm out here this afternoon. I had several bets to make, but most importantly, I came to claim my Florida Derby tickets. 21 of us coming. Let's see how the racing turned out today. The third today it was made in special way for two year olds. Yes, there's a Todd Fletcher runner. Two-year-old Philly, Eskin for Money, daughter of champion Eskan Dorea, who loved this track. Looked tons the best. Not only did she look the best, but it's a soft feel. I made her my bet of the day. And now it is Eskin for Money, it was going at it with Majestic Masquerade. They went 47-1 and one for a half mile, and the heavy favorites got pressure. It is Eskin for Money on the rail, Majestic Masquerade on the outside, nose to nose, three furlongs out, and they're six lengths ahead of the rest. And True History is up running in third now, starting to gain some ground on the top two. It's five lengths back to the rest of the field. Askin for Money and Majestic Masquerade take their battle to the top of the stretch, and Askin for Money's getting away. Three quarters in one thirteen flat. Askin for Money has put away Majestic Masquerade, and now True History moves up alongside and takes second, but with one furlong to go, John Velasquez and Eskin for Money got are a six lane lead on True History and the others. It's Eskin for Money. Coming Bad home, of the day. strong Tom to win it by eight. Silly. True History was oh, yeah. Prime time. Walked with it. The fourth at Goldstone today was a mile and the 16th claiming event on the turf. My top pick was number 11, Russell. Jr. are out there on a four-length lead and went 45-3 and three for the first half mile. A front-running mission here for Starship Gambler. Now it's a four-and-a-half-length lead. A lover's question is second. Bustle third to the outside. CC and Red has been switched outside of horses for a clear run. Now seven lengths off the lead as they move for the turn, and they're catching Starship Gambler now. The lead is dwindling. Starship Gambler is joined by Bustle, and Bustle takes the lead. Bustle to the front, coming to the top of the stretch. Starship Gambler has given way, then a lover's question. CC and Red full out. Eastern Atlantic is in behind them, and then comes Dance with Geo and Phoenix Court. But Bustle and Joel Rosario have run away, and Phoenix Court has taken second lead. For the back of the pack, Starship Gambler is well. in the fourth. It is Bustle. Bustle to Joel for Phoenix. Bet an 880 get back nearly $45. It's a winning day. You gotta love Gulfstream. And they're into the stretch of 46 and two half mile and get creative. Turns for home with a three length lead on Caramello. Then it's off duty third on the outside, followed by third cup of coffee along the rail. Past the 16th pole and Edgar Zayas and get creative are all alone. They're going to win by six or seven. Todd Fletcher and Johnny Velasquez get on Enchantress, my top pick on the opener here at Gulfstream. Enchantress had been impressive in a six furlong maiden special weight debut, and then she went into the grade three tempted at a one turn mile. She set the pace for four furlongs before fading to give way. Today she was turning back to six furlongs and looked to have this field over a barrel. She went off at a generous three to five, pressed the pace into the turn. Mama Mia Maria has made up ground into second. A 46 flat half mile are into the stretch, and it's Enchantress, and she's running away. Enchantress coming by the eighth pole, three and a half lengths in front. Mama Mia Maria claims to second, and Enchantress 
Triple the bet on Enchantress. The fourth at Gulfstream was a claiming event going six furlongs. I like number 14, Alaco Castle. What I didn't like was he was claimed for 8,000, two back. And then he won for 10,000, and today he was in for 6,000. And he was in post 14. Paco Lopez had him cruising up on the outside. Today's bet of the day was the feature at the fairgrounds, the Louisiana Champions Classic. If Sunbeam could win today, he would be the youngest Louisiana bred to go over a million dollars. Star Guitar was first Louisiana bred, and he did it at age five. Sunbeam is four. He was the heavy favorite at one to five. Sunbeam, bed of the day. The eighth at Gulfstream, we were on the turf for the El Prado Stakes. I like number seven, Mishawash for Todd Pletcher and Javier Castellano, who picked up his first win earlier today. Stalked the pace as the three to two favorite, then burst out into the stretch. The eighth at the fairgrounds was the Louisiana Champions Lassie. I like number 12, Wind Chill Factor. Wind Chill Factor had last been seen in the Louisiana Jewel for two year olds, and that was at Delta Downs. She'd been my bet that day, and man, she was impressive that day. In spite of drawing far outside today, she was a stalker and a closer, and that just plays really well here. So I thought the post position wouldn't hurt her. I did not like the favorite on the rail, four to five, who was a front runner. Sure enough, that favorite, Vivian Dobling, went right to the front and was clear as they hit the far turn. Then here came wind chill factor. Oh yeah, double the bet. Did you see that payoff? Paid a nice $8.40, get back $42. Oh man, that was nice. The ninth at Gar Gulfstream was the Harlan's Holiday. My top pick was Liam's Matt from the Top Touch Barn. He had been rumored to be going to run in the Grade 3 Discovery last time out, but instead he went in the allowance and just walked with it. Man, he looked talented. So my plan was to triple the bet on him. When I looked up at the betting, he was being hammered down to one to two. As I had been watching the Louisiana Champions Lassie from the fairgrounds about 10 minutes to post time here at Gulfstream, I said, if I win this race, I'm gonna up the bet. So Liam's map went off at even money, stalked the pace perfectly in second, moved to the turn, and then was challenged by grade two winner Valid and it was a stretch duel to the wire.
And Liam's Matt full out to stick with Valid, who's running a big one. Pants on fire and still five lengths behind them. They're into the stretch. And it's Valid. And Liam's the winner I had 15 to win and because I won the Lassie I added 10 onto that so I had 25 to win over $50 on Liam's map nice my second stakes win of the day here the ninth at the fairgrounds was my best bet of the day in New Orleans it was the Louisiana champions turf I like number five string king local record of nine four two and one Consistently just run faster than these. Just pressing the pace three wide into the stretch. Made his run. Tiger Run set down now. Ben will. Here comes String King, the 13th winner. String King has taken the lead. Tiger Run is staying on. So to Ben will. Late game by Storm Driver. And it's String King. Oh, yeah, 20. 20 to win. Nice. It's my 12th win of the day. Niche and quite the issue on the far outside. They still have to get to Kit Kat Man. Here comes March Reward on the outside. Ricochet coming up the fence. March Reward Ricochet. Stableford is now third. Here's the wire. And it is March Reward.